Lord, just thank you for allowing us to be here today. Watch over, protect us, forgive us our many sins, our failures and faults. Just ask and pray that you'll be with us as we're leading the parish. I ask and pray that you'll be with our administrator and each and every one of our employees, and especially all, most of all, be with our citizens in our parish, dear Lord. I ask and pray a special prayer for Commissioner Lindora Baker and her family at this time. Just ask and pray that you will put your hand upon them and comfort them, as well as a parish employee, Jimmy Whittington, who's recently lost his uh, mother. Just ask and pray that you will touch them in a special way. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Pledge. Pledge, Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> have agenda additions. Uh, Ms. Lance? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm going to make an agenda addition for an emergency appropriation um, to the Cattle Council on Aging. Second. Okay, we've got an uh, agenda addition for an emergency <coughs> uh, appropriation for the Cattle Council on Aging. The amount uh, is to be determined, I guess, by the uh, committee. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Cast your vote for the uh, addition. All right, that passes. Have any citizens' comments? We have any cards? Have none, sir. No cards. I uh, have no visitors. Special resolution. Yes, sir. We have a special resolution for Mr. Gary Kennedy and Red Ball Oxygen Company. Come over, Chair. Second. 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 He's here. Mr. Kennedy? He is. Mr. Yeah. Kennedy, would you come to the front, sir, please? Commissioners, would you stand, please? <clears throat> In the name and by the authority of the Cattle Parish Commission, resolution of recognition to Mr. Gary Kennedy. Whereas it is the desire of the Cattle Parish Commission to give appropriate acknowledgement and recognition to individuals and organizations who have rendered invaluable service in its behalf to the citizens of Cattle Parish. And whereas the Kennedy family and Red Ball Oxygen have served the community faithfully and effectively since 1969 as a provider of batteries, modern cylinder sil filling, full service welding equipment and supplies, industrial gases, medical gases, safety equipment, a palletized cil cylinder distribution system, and now serves 23 customer service branches in Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. And whereas Mr. Gary Kennedy has always strived to make sure the citizens of Shreveport and Cattle Parish were helped, whether it was providing quality customer service and quality products or working to help those in need of a meal or roof over their head. He has especially enjoyed taking the time to offer young men and women around the city and parish full and part-time jobs as a training ground for later employment and passing on the art of quality customer service. And whereas Mr. Kennedy's passionate dedication to quality of life issues, public safety, and the welfare of citizens can be traced throughout his entire career. His commitment to the Agers Business District and the Back the Badge are only two of the many issues that demonstrates he not only backs his commitment monetarily, but is willing to put many personal hours in ensuring they are followed through to the end. Mr. Kennedy's love for this community has resonated throughout with his many hours of community service and his willingness to provide the citizens of Cattle Parish a quality service in every endeavor. Now therefore be it resolved that the Cattle Parish Commission meeting in legal regular session convened this 22nd day of March 2012, it does hereby convey its deepest and most sincere expressions of gratitude and appreciation to Mr. Gary Kennedy for the invaluable contributions he has made during many years of selfless service to his parish and city. Signed Mike Thibodeau, President, Lindora Baker, Vice President, and Michael D. Williams, District 3. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, very humbling. 
and very much appreciate it. I'd like to say Mr. Kenny on behalf of our President, Mike Thibodeau, and after all, Ms. Vice President, Ron Baker, parliamentarian, and all members that serve you. We're very grateful and thankful for you staying in Cattle Parish. We know you and your family have been a pioneer, providing jobs and improving the quality of life, concerned about the public safety in our community. You've been a strong advocate for our fire and police department. And I just want to say just a small token of our appreciation for staying and doing the tough time. You didn't have a rule to leave. You stayed and provided a job and paid the taxes to keep us afloat. Just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Very, very humbling, and I'd like to say to each of you, thank you very much, uh, particularly to Commissioner Williams and to uh, Ms. Hopkins for arranging everything. I'd like to introduce you to two of the 195 of us that serve our customers and our community. Ralph Thomas, our Vice President of Finance and our CFO, is here with me today. Alex Kennedy, our Vice President of Operations, is here with me today. And these two men, along with Bob Ewing, our President, and uh, Jared Lipsy, our Vice President of Sales, are the leaders of the organization. I'm the past, they're the future. I would like to take just a second to say thank you again to Mr. Williams for uh, the recognition. It's been a uh, goal of ours to continue the work that my father started in the community. After all, we make our living in the community. If we didn't give something back, what sort of people would we be? I'm proud that in addition to our primary causes traditionally, which are law enforcement and children's issues, I'm proud that we've been able to support such various causes as Shreveport Community Renewal, uh, Robinson Film Center, the Louisiana State Exhibit Museum, and other causes that are worthwhile here in our community. It's because of the 185 Red Ball Oxygen team members we have and the customer base that we serve, particularly the customer base we serve, because without them, we wouldn't have roofs over our head, we wouldn't have food on the table, we wouldn't have the opportunity to be here in front of you today, we wouldn't have the opportunity to give back to the community. So it's something that I'm proud that we've been able to continue, but something that I can't take any credit uh, <coughs> And I'll accept the award on behalf of the other people at Red Ball on behalf of my father, who's the one that taught us this. I would like to say congratulations to this group. You remind me a lot of the team at Red Ball. When I tell Commissioner Williams, uh, thanks for the good work. Y'all sure do work well together. He says, well, no, really, it's Commissioner Cox or Commissioner Lynn. When I tell Commissioner Lynn, it's amazing how y'all been able to work well together. He says it's Commissioner Johnson or it's Commissioner Escudé in particular. Every time I try to credit one of you individually for the fact that you're white, you're black, you're male, you're female, you're Republican, you're Democrat, and yet I never read about you in the paper. You do such a good job and you do it so well that the community, I don't know if our community appreciates what you do and what a good job you do, but I want to tell you that we at Red Ball Oxygen Company do. You just keep up the good work, keep working together as a team, and all of us at Red Ball appreciate uh, the recognition. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Lynn. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy. I was going to say some more good things about you, Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> tell, me oh, the tell me the bad stuff. Oh, the, I met Mr. Kennedy, and I'm going to say it was approximately 33 years ago when you started the Shreveport Rugby Football Club. And, and of all the accomplishments that Mr. Kennedy has, I would have to say the one closest to home to me was the, the implementation and the assembly, including himself as a, as a member of the Shreveport Rugby Football Club. And in doing so, he has brought people, rugby players, from all over the world to move to Shreveport. And a lot of them have made the Shreveport Caddo Parish their permanent home. And I, I commend him for that. I know that um, Mr. Kennedy's father and, and my father, that when the Shreveport Steamers were active and the Shreveport Americans were active, that they both instantly hired all of the football players that they brought in and put them to work so that they could afford to live in the area. And Mr. Kennedy has, has done the exact same thing with the rugby football club. Anybody that wants to move to Shreveport that wants to play rugby, I, I think they almost have a, a guaranteed spot on the workforce. <laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you for all my rugby team memories. That, those, are, those are near and dear to my heart as a, as a child. So thank you. Lock it. 
You know, Matthew's brother played with me for two decades, so he knows where he speaks. Thank you very much, Commissioner Lynn. There's more people that want yeah, to say Mr. good Cox. stuff about you. That's all, Mr. President. Thank all you. Right, thank you. Uh, it's nice to see a business leader such as yourself come down here and not only accept the award because your business has done such a fine job over and above the call of duty when it comes to special needs, uh, but it's also nice to hear a business leader like yourself uh, represent your team, your, your company, and tell us that we're doing a good job. That means that uh, some people are paying attention to what we do here, and on behalf of the commission, I would just like to say thank you. Uh, thanks for having your business in, in Cattle Parish and Freeport. And uh, if there's anything we can do, uh, let us know because uh, we can't do anything for you unless you let us know. Uh, an open line of communication is always good to have with business leaders. We're trying to bring in new business, and if we have a company coming in, we'd like to pull you away from your desk one day and say, talk to people who are actually doing business in Cattle, and they'll tell you uh, we're ready to serve. And uh, you're that kind of person. We appreciate your help and your efforts in, in Kettle Parish. Well, th thank you again. But you, you have earned the praise, all of you here on this uh, commission. You've earned it. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Kennedy, uh, four years ago, you uh, helped us out quite a bit by we were trying to raise some money for Mr. Monica Lockett to be able to see her son compete in the Olympics. And thank you for your generous offer of $500 for she to go to that event. We appreciate it. And thank you so much for being a good citizen of our parish. Thank you. I got one. I got one. Oh, okay. One more. One thing, one more. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but David was talking about what our role has been, what we try to do with economic development, and basically we have no official uh, entity set up to do that, and, and the city's... Uh, has been lacking, for lack of a better word, and the master plan uh, identified that. And we're very close to working out with the city right now a joint city parish economic development office entity that will specifically do that, funded by both governmental bodies, but once it's stood up, not controlled by either of these bodies, so that it can do what it does best. And we've identified criteria for board members and uh, about what we'd like for them to bring to the table. And the only reason I mention that is, uh, you know, I would uh, love for you to strongly <coughs> consider maybe wanting to offer to serve on that board while we get it stood up and going. It's gonna, we're going to be serious and active. We've identified, not to belabor the point, but the director himself will go out and, and seek to make contacts and bring in new business and industry. We're going to have a full-time person, which we've never had before. We'll do nothing but visit existing <coughs> businesses focusing on business ex uh, retention and expansion. You know, we've got to take care of what we have. And, and so if you're remotely interested, that opportunity has come along, and I'd like very much that you would consider uh, uh, serving on that. We need people who are dedicated to this community with that kind of insight. And, and as a side note, I'm privileged to serve with these guys, and we do get along very well. But uh, it's like I noticed, I asked my mom one day, you know, when she was in the 60s, I said, you know, I never heard you and my dad argue. I said, you know, and me and my wife go at it every now and what's the deal? She said, oh, we did it in private. We do our dirty first in the private, <laughs> you know, unlike Congress or maybe the legislature. But but uh, overall, though, we get it resolved, and, and I, I appreciate that observation. Thank you. I'd be honored to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the first time I met Commissioner Williams was the shovel, the groundbreaking at the Prime Master Campus plan out by the airport. The first time, in my knowledge, the city, the parish, and the state had ever combined offer incentives for an existing company to stay here and it kept TriMaster here allowed them to expand I have a vested interest in that TriMaster is a customer of mine of ours and we don't exist without our customers so we'd be pleased to serve I'd be pleased to serve thank you very much anything along those lines I'd be happy to well, it would be a tell. it'd be it, it'd be the easiest sales call I've ever made <laughs> so <laughs> thank, thank you thank you very much thank you all all right <clears throat> we need Pardon? to have a motion and a second. We need to approve. Identify. Uh, a second, Mr. Uh, uh, Commissioner Williams' motion. All right. All right. Cast your vote, please. That pa passes. All right. Our next one. Next, we have a reach for the Stars Mentoring Program. We just need to. Oh, we need to move a motion and second. We won't read it today. Okay. So moved, Chair. Second. second. 
A motion by Mr. Williams, second by Ms. Lynch. Cast your vote, please. And that passes. Next, we have the proclaim of March as National Women's History Month. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Epperson and a second by Mr. Johnson. Cast your vote, please. Mr. Epperson? Yes, sir. I have a comment. All right. Just a little brief history about Women's History Month. Women's History Month came out of a small town school event in California. It was a celebration of women's contributions to history, culture, and society. The United States has observed this annually throughout the month of March since 1987. The 2012 theme is Women's Education, Women's Empowerment. It honors pioneering teachers and advocates who help women and other groups to gain access to learning. The Women's History Month in the United States grew out of a week-long celebration of women's contributions to culture, to history, and society organized by school districts in Sonoma, California. In 1978, presentations were given at dozens of schools. Hundreds of students participated in a Real Woman essay contest, and a parade was held in downtown Santa Rosa. A few years later, the idea had caught on within communities, school districts, and organizations throughout the country. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8th as National Women's History Week. The U.S. Congress followed suit the next year, passing a resolution establishing a national celebration. Six years later, the National Women's History Project successfully petitioned Congress to expand the event for the entire month of March. So I think a fitting topic for this year's National Women's History Month, Education and Women's Empowerment. It takes me back to the days from elementary school all up through high school when teachers such as Ms. Mariah Lewis, Ms. Lillian C. Ray, Ms. Creasy Hudson, who was all of five foot five inches tall and maybe 140 pounds, but she would go into that boy's bathroom when that bell rang and she'd grab the biggest 250 pound football player out of that bathroom and make sure that they got the class. Also, we have the late Ms. Lillian C. Ray, who would stay after school with us on her own time when we were working on science projects. Ms. Alberta Lewin, a high school counselor that took it upon herself to do a number of things and expend a number of her personal resources to make sure that we had an excellent education and we didn't have any distractions. And my most memory of a woman educated in my life was Ms. Mariah Lewis, who was in the third grade, when we were taking cursive, if you didn't do that T right, do that S right, she would bring you up in front of that class, tighten up those old worn out blue jeans, take that two inch by, by three foot strap made out of a tile rubber, and uh, she kind of embarrassed you. And I hold that to this day, had it not been for those women in my life, and I'm sure a number of us here today, that we would not be where we are today. And let us not forget the other women in our lives. We are constantly getting educated by our wives or our significant others or whomever they may be. So I think this is a fitting celebration. And, uh, Mom. 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 And Mom. Mom. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Mom. Good Mom. Right. So thank you. That's all I have. Ms. Lynch. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm really appreciative of the men stepping up and uh, <laughs> recognizing uh, this uh, occasion. I appreciate it as a uh, female elected official. You all doing that. Thank you. All right. Cast your votes, please. And that passes. Let's see, we've got one other resolution that was postponed, resolution number nine, delayed from January 17th uh, to support a healthy local food system. Uh, could we go ahead and do that now? Just move that to other resolution. Yeah, let me get it. All right. Second. 
motion and a second. Got a motion and a second? So moved. Motion by Mr. Graham. Second. By the County Affairs Commission, a resolution to support a healthy local food. Before you get started, I think we have some people here who will see that resolution. Thank you. By the Federal Affairs Commission, a resolution to support a healthy local food system and otherwise provide with respect thereto. Whereas the County Affairs Commission recognizes the food system and issues pertaining to the food system significantly affect the public health, economy, land use, and quality of life of all citizens. And whereas locally grown food is healthy for our community members and environmentally sustainable, and to that access to safe, nutritious, and culturally acceptable food is essential to human health and increases economic viability. And whereas there are communities in our region that are considered food deserts with little or no access to fresh, affordable, and healthy food, and whereas consumption of healthy food reduces <coughs> nutrition-related illnesses such as diabetes, obesity, and heart disease, and whereas it is estimated that one in three people in our community are food insecure and more than one in five families with children are food insecure. And whereas food-related health concerns are a major challenge for our community with a third of the adults obese and almost 20% of preschool children obese. In 2008, 13% of individuals in our region had type 2 diabetes. And whereas developing a healthy local food system has the potential to build health and resi resiliency in our communities and cultivating local farm and food businesses creates green industry jobs, reduces health care costs, and contributes to our long-term economic prosperity. And whereas citizens have mandated the creation of a healthy local food system in the 2010 Master Plan. And whereas we wish to bequeath to our future generations a healthy world with healthy choices. Now therefore be it resolved by the Cattle Parish Commission in due regular legal session convened that it does hereby support a healthy local food system and encourages citizens, civic organizations, businesses, community-based organizations, and neighborhoods to support the production and sale of locally grown food in home gardens, community gardens, school gardens, and regional, urban, and rural farms. Be it further resolved that the Cattle Parish Commission encourages a focus on educating our community about nutrition and the benefit of local food consumption in order to promote a more sustainable social, environmental, and economic future. Be it further resolved that issues and concerns of establishing a healthy local food system shall hold a priority in our plans and deliberations. Be it further resolved that if any provision of, of this resolution or application thereof is held invalid. <coughs> Move. Second. All right. Thank you. Yes, your vote, please. <laughs> that passed. <laughs> All right, next item. I did want to. All right, man. Um, one thing that I did want everybody to recognize is that Caddo Parish, in in conjunction with the Fuller Center, has recognized that Allendale was a a food desert and has contributed greatly towards the renovation of a building in the Allendale neighborhood to convert it um, into a grocery store that would provide healthy food for the citizens of that neighborhood. Um, right now, um, the Fuller Center is in partnership with Berkshire's Grocery, um, hopefully to be able to put affordable, high quality food fresh for the neighborhood. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, Mr. Thank, you. Thank you for coming forth and taking that. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would like to say a few things. I mean, let me just uh, commend Commissioner Lynn and the young lady who come forward because one of the things that's been missing in that community is uh, that's been a void is convenience store that provide healthy food and a good positive image in our community because we know we have a lot of negative ills and a lot of urban blight, so we need some to to highlight uh, that community. I think that could be an anchor. 
to support a positive, more positive, productive attitude because we know obesity is a serious national problem in America, in our schools, and providing uh, fresh vegetables, uh, nutritional meals to some people that won't even get a meal someday because people are very, very poor, a lot of poor area in that area. So I'm, I'm just excited and looking forward to the full development of the store and looking forward to working with you and Mr. Lynn also uh, in the Fuller Center to see that one day that dream come true. So I just want to commend you and Mr. Lynn for what you're doing for the district that I represent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we have something uh, that's not on our agenda. I believe it's just a employer that will say something on the speak. Mm -hmm. Mr. Raymond, did you? Yeah. Uh, commissioners, uh, we have uh, one of our employees, Mr. Kelly, is uh, getting ready to retire and just have entered into retirement. But we don't want him to walk out the door without us first recognizing what he's been doing for us. The conditions at the court has been his primary responsibility. So I'd like to have Mr. Kelly and Mary come forward at this time. Um, thank you, Commissioners. This won't take long, but we would be remiss if we didn't recognize uh, Kelly McMullen. Uh, he came to us about 17 and a half years ago and as a foreman of our special projects crew, and then ultimately when our other parks foreman retired, he assumed responsibility for all of our maintenance people. But if parks has accomplished anything over the last 17 years, most of the credit is really due to Kelly and, and his crew who have done the work out in the field. This is the hardest working man I've ever met in my entire life. He operates a uh, game bird preserve. He raises game birds, exotic pheasants and things like that, hundreds and hundreds. He gets up at 3.30 when he was working for us. He'd get up at 3.30 every morning and start feeding his animals get to work for 7 o'clock, put in a full day, rain or shine, he'd cut the grass in the rain, it wouldn't matter to him. Even if I told him not to, it didn't do any good. <laughs> then he'd go home and work to 9.30 at night with his game birds and go to sleep. And he did that routine every day, 365 days a year for 17 and a half years. Uh, just absolutely incredible. I think as most of you know, he has a degree in horticulture from Louisiana Tech. He has the book knowledge, but he also has the artistic feel. And he is the one who has really been involved in landscaping the courthouse and many of the other parish facilities. He's also been involved in all of our playground upgrades that we've done over the last 15 years or so. He has been the leader of our Shreveport team that's been assigned to Cattle Parish since we've had a Shreveport team. And many of these young adults are now working on their own. And I can't tell you how many come up to me and tell me how much it meant to work with Mr. Kelly's team. They learned how to work when they were with Cattle Parish. And, and they go back to those days when they laid the asphalt trails in some of our parks. It was hot, it was hard work, but they stuck with it because they had a leader who wouldn't quit, and so they wouldn't quit. And he's been involved in many of our special events over the years. So. Uh, we just wanted to present Kelly with this plaque, recognizing his 17 and a half years of service, but what really is exemplary service for Cattle Parish employee. I was just doing my job. <laughs> I think if everybody do, does their job and does it well, then they can leave feeling good about themselves. And uh, actually, the first commissioner, well, the commissioner that was the commissioner of the administrator was Judy Durham. And I, <clears throat> when I met her, I told her, I said, I will not be a typical government worker. And I hope that I've stayed that way. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Lynch? Yes, I think that's the most I've heard Larry say in the whole eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Kelly, you sneaked out of here without me knowing you had actually retired. And um, I came by the courthouse, and I think I saw a blade of grass 
that looked like it was too high. And I said, where's Kelly? <laughs> and the guy told me you had retired. So I knew there was an immediate difference um, uh, <clears throat> that particular day. Uh, but they got it done that day. Um, certainly, you know, you know how I feel about you. I think you're just, you know, a great person. Um, you know, really appreciate the heart and the soul that you put into your job, as you say. But you went above and beyond uh, that each and every day. I think that uh, before we actually had that flag removed, I'm not sure if all the time people even knew it was there because they were captivated by the landscape and the beauty of, uh, of that surrounding area. I'm not sure if they ever, some people ever had an opportunity to look up because of the work that you did and I certainly appreciate that. Certainly appreciate you being here today. I know that was hard for them to get you here. Yeah, it was hard to leave the woods this time. <laughs> but but I, told yes, them, I told them that we were going to do like they do at the Oscars and the Grammys when the person is not there. We were going to have a celebration in your honor anyway. Well, you I, do I do appreciate you. <laughs> so thank you again. Appreciate thank you. you. All right, Mr. Dominic. Uh, Kelly, I just wanted to reiterate some of the things that everybody's saying. You know, as an attorney goes to the courthouse all, all the time. It's just uh, the landscaping and everything you've done there is just been remarkable over the years and having with um, hooked on fishing and um, at our parks and our town parks when we're putting those together uh, I personally appreciate all your hard work and effort um, I've always heard just really really good things never heard a bad word about you it's always good 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 positive things when someone says something about you it's just what Larry was saying very very hard worker and dependable and uh, that's hard to find and uh, just thank you. We're going to miss you and uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Uh, I too thank you, Kelly. Uh, you gave us some instrumental pointers in uh, landscaping our medium in the subdivision. I can say that our membership dues increased substantially after they saw what had transpired within that medium, so we appreciate it. And I remember the first day I saw you up there working on it, it was raining. And you were still working just like nothing was happening. Yeah. Well, Thank you. I'm being paid for eight hours of work. You're supposed to do about eight hours. <laughs> okay. Huh. I appreciate you and wish you all the best in your retirement. Okay. Thank you. Best of day. Uh, appreciate everything you've done for us. I've seen you around. You know, never met you. You keep such a low profile. If Mr. Raymond says you're the hardest working person that he's ever known, and Mr. Raymond being one of the hardest working people, I've ever known, and I don't know who can come close to holding a candle to you. <laughs> but if there's some kind of formula of dust, I wish you would sprinkle it on before you way out the door so you could touch all of us a little bit. <laughs> well, I, do have, I do have a magic dust that I use around the flower beds, but I don't think you want me to use that. Well, we've got, sheriff's, <laughs> got sheriff's deputy here. The <laughs> um, but that aside, also, since you seem to have a good, uh, strong work ethic and, and and a an natural ability and desire to know, to, to know what to do. If we ever get into any real questionable crisis about wondering about our own efficiencies and commodities of scale and how well we're doing here, human resources might want to contract you out one day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. William, I too would like to thank you for your unselfish dedication and commitment and the high standard you set for the employees that's coming behind you uh, to be able to work in a very uh, positive uh, environment and love what you do. Uh, Commissioner, I think it would be remiss at some point that we recognize him with a resolution of appreciation somewhere down the road for the work he's done. So maybe at our next commission meeting we will rec and all assign it a uh, letter of appreciation for the work this young man has done for our community and for our district. So hopefully we will do that sometime in the future. Thank you. All right, and last but not least, Mr. Randy Lutz. Appreciate you, Mr. Tibbet. No, I didn't have a button to push, so that's why I did like that. Uh, been doing Kelly since I've uh, been here for 14 years. Or the mic. Larry is, Larry is truly right. He's, he is the hardest working individual ever. And uh, But one thing I didn't know about Brother Kelly that I found out about him, uh, I knew he had, would do these birds, you know, start at 3.30 in the morning cutting fruit and getting everything ready for me. I knew he had a whole lot of birds, but when we went out to parks, and Larry made the statement to his uh, group out there. He said, uh, I don't know if y'all know this about Kelly, but he started talking about his uh, expertise in birds. His expertise in birds. And he said, Kelly's one of the 
authorities? Foremost authorities on birds, not only in the United States, but in the world. Well, coming from Larry, I kind of went, woo, I said, man, do y'all realize that? So I had to come back, I was telling Woody about it, and really, man, it's just an honor to know you. You do a hell of a good job, and uh, keep it up. <laughs> well, that's my life. <laughs> All right, we have uh, communicate and committee reports. Have anything from the administration? Okay. Anything from the administration? Um, that's his our report for the day, sir. All right, Miss Lynch. Uh, yes, um, I wanted to give a um, kind of a little brief uh, update from the National Association of Counties conference that uh, we attended earlier <coughs> this month. Uh, for you all that may not be familiar with them, with NACO, it's a National Association of Counties, which there are 3,068 counties in the United States. And I believe 63 of the parishes, or <coughs> boroughs, depending on where you are, but 63 of the parishes in Louisiana are members of uh, NACO. I think Allen Parish may be the only one we're trying to make sure uh, gets in but certainly a part of the uh, quality, I think, of representation that we have here in Caddo Parish is in part due to our involvement with NACO over the years, certainly preceding me and since I've been here. <coughs> at, from the administrative level as well as the commission level, we can see that the positive, some of the positive outcomes that we've had as a commission body, uh, whether it's a veteran cemetery or the adjudicated property program, uh, the dental discount program, the prescription drug card program has certainly been from our uh, affiliation with NACO. Uh, at one time we had seven commissioners that were actively involved um, with the organization. Of course we lost Rose and, and Ken uh, on those committees, but uh, Ken I believe serves on Veterans and Military Affairs and Labor and Education, I believe is the name. Labor and Employment. Labor and, and Employment. Um, Matthew is on uh, Arts and Culture, maybe one other one, Arts and Culture Commission. Yes, and Transportation. And uh, David is on Transportation. Uh, Commissioner Baker is on Community and Economic Development, where she serves as a vice chair, <coughs> I think, for housing. She's also on Membership, Large Urban County Caucus, Women of NACO, <coughs> and uh, National Association of Black County Officials. Myself um, serve as uh, chair of the Programs and Services Committee, vice chair for Ju Justice and Public <coughs> Safety, membership, large urban county caucus, uh, National Association of Black County Officials, and the Green Government Advisory uh, Commission. Uh, and I'm certainly hopeful that as we go forward that uh, more commissioners will take up the mantle certainly of the ones uh, that we lost as far as be getting on steering committees uh, and being uh, active in a part of these policy uh, areas that we address as a member of that organization. Um, I have uh, one of the things that came out of that is that the um, America's Natural Gas Alliance which is a trade association representing North America's largest independent natural gas producers, has joined NACO uh, as a partner. And certainly, we are very much a natural gas state. We have, we're right in the sweet spot of the Haynesville Shell. And so that is going to be a partnership that's going to, I think, inure to our benefit. They also um, not only partnered with NACO, but partnered with the National Association of Black County Officials as well. Um, you all hopefully received one day a copy of a response that uh, Congressman Fleming sent in regards to some uh, lobbying that we were doing from NACO regarding the transportation infrastructure funding. When we were at uh, D.C. <coughs> on a lobbying trip in February, this is certainly one of the things that we talked about with our uh, delegation there, particularly the off system bridge program, which funding is under um, some stress right now, and certainly uh, uh, our lobbying as well as NACO lobbying and a whole lot of other folks, they did restore funding for that, 
and uh, but we've got to continue to watch that. There's going to be an extension on the transportation bill. It's not a done deal, but we certainly want to continue to, um, to do that. Our registrations for the dental discount program are going up. We have 35 families that are saving under that program currently. Um, another initiative that NACO uh, was successful in uh, having done with our assistance was the repeal of the 3% holding tax. What the federal government wanted us to do, which is an unfunded mandate, was to withhold 3% of payments from vendors for goods and services and send it to the IRS. Uh, but we were successful in, in repealing that after so many years of lobbying to make sure that we did not have to bear the operational expenses of dealing with that. Um, I think that was pretty much it right now. So thank you. If anybody has any questions? Any of that? Um, Let's see, uh, Mr. Officer, Mr. Smith, is your, are your comment, comments on that same? Uh, no, the, no okay. communicating for it. Right. I'll wait until the, the printed agenda go down. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for you. I mean, we'll get to you then. Ms. Lynch, you have that on I uh, just wanted to make note of the Women's Entrepreneurship Symposium, which is going to be March 25th and 26th at the Shreveport Convention Center. It's being uh, hosted by Senator Landrew and uh, Mayor <coughs> Uh, I think they're going to have people from the Patent and Trademark Office and some and uh, the Small Business Administration, which uh, Senator Landrieu oversees that uh, agency. And uh, looking at the agenda, it looked that they were going to have quite a bit of information. I know I get inquiries from time to time from uh, women business owners that are interested in information, and until we can get our kind of one-stop shop entity set up that may... You know, I just wanted to make the commission aware um, and the citizens aware that this is coming up and they may want to avail themselves of the opportunity to, to get that information during this symposium. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Williams, we'll have you for Cal Parish Commission District 3 Small Business Award for three. Small Builders. Is that a resolution? No, sir, we just we just read. He just so read it. Uh, a monthly award that would be okay. Mr. The Hall the and Mr. Mr. Hall, Mr. Jerry Hall. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name and by the authority of the Cattle Coast Commission, no need there that whereas on the 22nd day of March 2012, this District 3 Small Business Owner Award is presented to Mr. Ricky Hall, Hall Builders Incorporated, for his forceful and dynamic commercial presence in the community and for the contributions he has made to the economic development and well-being of the area. Signed, Michael D. Williams, Commission District 3. Let me say on behalf of our president, Mr. Mike Chippendor, and our vice president, Al, and our parliamentarian and the other members that serve on this body, appreciate your father for being a stakeholder in our community, providing how they role model for you and your brother. You come up here too, Mr. Hall. These are Mr. Hall's sons. <coughs> Great Christian young man in our community. The father has set some positive examples for you all to carry on his legacy. They also provide jobs and paying taxes in our community. And we want to just say thank you for the work that you're doing and still doing. And uh, we now have a program the small emergency here in Cattle Parish. And hopefully, Mr. Uh, Administrator, you will find it in your time to get with the hall and see how things be doing in the Cattle Parish. And congratulations. God bless you. Um, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Hall Builders. It's uh, actually kind of interesting because I didn't know what I was going to say when I got up here. I'm sitting in front of all these sagacious people here, and you guys are looking at me and <laughs> expressing these kind words to us. And we, me and my brother here, we, we just thank you just doesn't go to the vast of uh, that we, we, we appreciate you guys for this award here. Uh, we're in a period of just trying to continue this business and transition on. The Father has always taught us great things to train and he leads and he succeeds and that's what we want to continue to do as the children of Hall, uh, Mr. Ricky Hall. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Appleson. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a few notes from the uh, 
NATO Veterans and Military Task Force, uh, the World War II Memorial, which recently opened in Washington, D.C., upon last year in 2011. If there's any individual that may have had someone to serve in World War II, there's a registry where as visitors can come and get on computer and they can look up the name of each veteran and uh, a military person that served in World War II. I have copies of this uh, in your box where you can go to register. Also, we're going to focus more on veterans' health issues. Uh, we're going to be focusing more on the uh, each state to enact a <coughs> law uh, where a veteran status will be issued upon veterans' driver's license as well as formal ID with each state. And I'm proud to say that we have House Bill number 133 that made it out of committee, and it's on the floor now for final hearing. Uh, relative to veteran status being issued on Louisiana state driver's license and uh, formal ID. Uh, this will help veterans instead of trying to carry their DD-214s around, uh, they have to certify by bringing their DD-214 to initially get this entered on to their driver's license or formal ID, and that way they can keep their DD-214s in safe places. Uh, also, we, in our late <coughs> employee benefits uh, steering committee, we passed a resolution urging Congress and the President to uh, expedite measures in the Excel uh, pipeline. And I think I saw on the news feature today that I believe they had stated that there's a certain portion that they're going to expedite, about a 500-mile section. However, another section is still under study. So I guess a piece of something is better than a piece of nothing to get it started. So it, it appears as if they're going to uh, go ahead and approve and expedite that 500-mile I think it's from a point in Missouri down to Houston that uh, they, they have to initiate that other part from Canada on down to that point uh, at some form in, in time in the future. So help, hopefully that will create jobs and help enhance uh, what we are doing. Also, uh, synonymous with uh, the uh, resolution that this body passed in reference to leave uh, of local elected officials such as commissioners, jurors, council persons, uh, to once they're elected to be afforded the opportunity to serve at their basic meetings by their employers. Uh, that's a standing point in the NACO Labor and Employee Benefits Steering Committee. Also, we have House Bill number 811 in reference to that that will be heard in committee on March the 28th at 9 o'clock a.m. And I think that's the day that the Police Jury Association has for all our members to be uh, present. Uh, to lobby that day in Baton Rouge. So that takes care of everything I have, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Mr. Smith, as some of you know, Shaw Group helped a uh, informal kind of group with Bossier and Cattle Parish, which Mr. Escaday and most of the administration attended, I think it was on Wednesday, updated us on the steps they're taking to get us this project on the move. <coughs> I am very happy to tell you that you all made the right decision in choosing Shaw. Uh, they, they've got it together. They headed us in the right direction. And uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be a lot of fun also. And uh, and I think we'll be able to say mission accomplished when we get through. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Mr. Cox? Uh, we have scheduled a presentation today for uh, what we had had a discussion about novelties and drug paraphernalia. The gentleman from the uh, Kettle Parish Drug uh, uh, Department had to go out of town. So we will postpone that till April 5th. But between the time that this first came up till basically today, I've had probably about 20 phone calls and emails concerning this, this uh, particular item. Uh, it is getting uh, in all areas of Kettle Parish. Uh, I have been driving around to different uh, convenience stores, if you want to call them that, and walking in and seeing the same things in different parts of the parish. Uh, the gentleman I talked to from Cattle Parish Sheriff's Department uh, has uh, an ordinance being written. He's uh, going by some of the other states, other uh, counties in the country, and we will have something to present on April the 5th to this body uh, as far as what direction we should go. And in doing so, we can still make this year's uh, legislation down in Baton Rouge and maybe get something down there to be passed as well. So hopefully, we're headed in the right direction. 
and uh, y'all will be amazed on April 5th. So don't don't be late. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Williams. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to say on behalf of the citizens in the Highland Cherokee Park Neighborhood Association, we had a uh, community meeting on Monday, the 19th. I want to thank Mr. Woodrow and his staff for uh, coming to the meeting, giving an update on all the uh, fine service that cattle provide, also on the tax renewal that's coming up, also an update on the Bayou uh, initiative that we're working on. So I just want to commend you guys for coming out and uh, supporting the <laughs> Cherokee Highland Park Neighborhood Association. And to piggyback on what Commissioner Cox said, I'm, that is a serious, serious problem in our urban districts. Uh, the neighborhood stores are selling not only just paraphernalia, there are other th illegal things I feel that are sold in these stores, and I just want to be able to work with you on that particular uh, issue and problem to clean up the image in our neighborhood stores. Once, once they, once in the past they sold bologna and cheese and crackers, and now they're selling everything in our stores. That is a bad image, sending a mixed signal to our children. Alcohol and paraphernalia is not to be sold in neighborhood stores. So hopefully we can work together and find some a strong set of message. That you're not going to come in our neighborhood, destroy our neighborhood, and sell anything to our mm -hmm. children, to our citizens, and to our people. And uh, I want to commend you for taking the lead on it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Hopkins, uh, next order. There's no question. No question. Next, we need to adopt the minutes of the regular meeting held on March 8, 2012. So moved. Moved by Mr. Lynn, second by Mr. Johnson. Cast your vote, please. <coughs> yes. All right, that passes. Next, we move to public hearing on zoning ordinances. Zoning case P212 in regard to ordinance number 5182 of 2012. <coughs> 3900 block of North Market property located on the south side of North Market Street at the intersection with O'Neill Drive. Ben Beach applicant request to rezone from R1D Urban One Family Resident District to B2 Neighborhood Business District. All right. We have anyone to speak in favor of the uh, ordinance? <coughs> anyone to speak against the ordinance? <coughs> we'll call this hearing closed. Thanks for moving to public hearing on ordinances. Okay, Mr. 5183 of 2012, amend the budget of estimate revenues and expenditures for the Riverboat Fund in the amount of 35000 for a juvenile court program titled Facts of Life for the year 2012. Anyone to speak in favor of this ordinance? Anyone to speak against the ordinance? Okay, that's that's closed. Ordinance number 5185 of 2012 to amend and reenact Article 6 to change definitions and references in the Cato Economic Inclusion Initiative ordinances to track the language in the Louisiana Economic Development Small and Emerging Business Statutes. Anyone to speak in favor of the ordinance? Anyone to speak against the ordinance? Public hearing on 5185 is closed. Ordinance number 5186, 2012, to amend and reenact ordinances 2-217 to change the name and references in the Small and Economic Disadvantaged Business Directory to Small and Emerging Business Directory. Anyone to speak in favor of ordinance number 5186? Anyone to speak against? On that hearing, that uh, public hearing is closed on 5186. Ordinance number 5187, 2012, authorizing the donation of tract of land in Earl Williamson Park to the town of Bell City as site for a sewer lift station. Anyone to speak in favor of ordinance 5187? Anyone to speak against? Okay, the public hearing on ordinance 5187 is closed. Ordinance number 5188, 2012, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator designated sale parishes tax interest. You want to speak in favor of uh, Ordinance 5188? Against Ordinance 5188. The public hearing on 5188 is closed. Next, we move zoning ordinances for final passage. Ordinance number 5182 of 2012 in regard to zoning case P212, 4900 block of North Market, property located on the south side of North Market Street at the intersection with O'Neill Drive. 
request to rezone property located on the south side of North Market Street at the intersection of O'Neill from R1B Urban One Family Residence District to B2 Neighborhood Business District. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Dominick. Anyone need to speak? Cast your vote, please. That passes. Ordinance is for final passage. Ordinance 5183-2012, amending budget investment revenues and expenditures for the Riverboat Fund and the amount of $35,000 for a juvenile court program titled Facts of Life. So moved. Second. Ready to speak on that? I do. I'm going to speak. Mr. Williams. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, having been given the privilege to serve on the juvenile committee, while I do favor supporting this ordinance in the current stage, we do have a long-term problem. One of the things that concerns me is every time we come to this meeting, I look at the demographics and the number of children that are in our juvenile detention facility is almost 90% African American. However, I don't see how the kids are being referred back into the community through faith-based or community-based organizations. I have a problem with that because there is no way I can intelligently decide what programs will work and what programs don't work if we don't have the figures or the programs in front of us. And then also one of the other problems I have is the diversified workforce of being inclusive of the staffing. You've got 90% of African American children in a juvenile detention facility, but I don't see no department head that look like none of them. I don't see the diversified workforce that we need in that particular department. And that starts with the leadership on the hiring. I would like to see more inclusion, more diversification. When we talk about 85% of children in there are African American. I don't see the staffing that matches up with the children. Every time you come to me, it's the same old people. I don't see any other department heads. So we need to do a better job in being inclusive and making sure that we have people in administrative positions. When you've got almost 85% of people down there that are African American children and we're not seeing them referring back to the faith-based and community organization, I don't even know if they're being referred to my district. I bet a lot of the children in there are from the District 3. A lot of them are Lakeside and Cherokee Park. I mean, they do a great job. I'm not saying they do a great job, but we've got to be more diversified in the services that are being provided to our children. And until I see those numbers, I can't make intelligent decisions. And the people in my district sit me down to make intelligent decisions because it's their tax dollars we're spending. So hopefully in the future, when they come before us, they'll give us those figures, they'll give us those organizations who are being referred to in the FINS program. The Facts of Life is a great program. One of the programs I like is what's the Boot Camp Initiative. There's no funding for that no more. So hopefully we can have more diversification because Cattle and Shreveport is now very inclusive, very diversified. Everything we do, we need to think about diversification and being inclusive and working together. Working together means having a staff that looks like the diversification of Cattle and Shreveport, Louisiana. And that's where I want to go in that direction and being inclusive. So hopefully we can work on that the next time they come before us. Thank you. All right, Ms. Lynch. I had a couple of questions. One, the $35,000, what period is that intended to cover? Does it represent a final appropriation or what? Somebody help me on that. Ms. Cox, do you want to come and ask that question? I'll leave it to you, Jen. Okay. Ma'am, in answer to your question, the $35,000 is going to be for one January through the end of June. And again, we're calling that bridge money. We're hoping that we can bring the statistics, the stats that you've requested, so we can show you. We have stats on the Facts of Life program, but you want stats on the other programs. And I think that's an accurate, I mean, I think that's a fair request. So we're hoping that we'll be able to bring you the stats at the end of June. The whole commission can take a look and see what programs we've got that are working and which programs are not working and make a recommendation which programs we need to continue utilizing. 
Okay, so let, let, me, let, uh, let me understand because I want to make sure that the commission understands that this program overall, and I know what's been happening the last couple of months, but has no funding source from the court. And you all are looking for the entire program to be funded by the commission. Well, the only funding source that the, the, the juvenile court has would come out of the saying, judge's I'm judicial expense. It's a, it's a court fund. program, but you all have no funding for it. So the, Not continued so, funding. No, we don't. So the program would have to be funded in its entirety by the Cattle Parish Commission. That's correct. Okay. Do you know where they are, uh, what week they're on now? I guess they have a group of kids now. Do you? I know it's an eight-week program. Do you know where they? Well, as far as the program goes, I need to back off and let uh, either Clay or a uh, good foreman come up and give you that information. Okay. I mean, it's not. I don't know if it's really material, but I, I would like to know that what week they're on in particular now. Uh, not right. You don't have to tell me now. I'll, I'll find out later. Okay. And we'll okay. give you that information. I think it's. Let, oh, thank you, Ted. Yes, ma'am. He say that. Um, I've been a part of the, thank you, of the Juvenile Justice Committee <clears throat> since I came on the commission in 2004. I chaired the committee 2007 to 2009 and now I uh, am back chairing it. In the interim, I have immersed myself in this area of policy over the last eight years through the National Association of Counties through the Juvenile Detention Alternative Initiative. I've, I've attended <clears throat> at least two inner site conferences under the JD, JDAI program. I attended a, a um, model assessment center uh, in Portland, Oregon. I uh, have attended state meetings regarding uh, the JDAI initiative, like I said, as well as being involved with the Justice and Public Safety uh, committee with NACO, actually chairing the Juvenile Justice Committee for a couple of years. This particular program is not a program of the Juvenile Services Department. Every day we open the doors at that facility, we have a $2 million deficit. I cannot support deficit spending, whether that's coming from the court or whether it's coming from our internal operations. It is such at this time that uh, we found out in our meeting last week that uh, Juvenile Services is drawing down such a large part of the property tax revenue from the Public Works Department that if we continue at the rate that we're going, uh, we could potentially uh, deplete that revenue, property tax revenue part, um, which is of great concern to me uh, that that it's gotten to that point. <coughs> um, there was a layoff in 2004 mm -hmm. when I first came. Part of the reason that that was a, allegedly done was to help fix the juvenile, uh, just, uh, juvenile services problem. Well, it hadn't been fixed. Certainly the rededication has helped considerably but it hadn't been fixed. That's the only department that did not have any cuts, not one person in personnel. The um, expense side continues to grow, taking money, you know, getting money from the millage, getting money from public works and other funds, and even the commission, in addition to the money that it's using in those two, from those two sources, we're adding another about another hundred thousand dollars a year from Riverboat. So we have a department that is certainly, um, I'd say, for lack of a better word, sucking up a lot of money. Um, and eventually, we are really going to have to make some tough decisions. Uh, and I hope that, that that's not at a point where the state is, where your back is just against the wall and you have to take drastic cuts. And this is even before the anticipated cuts that we're expecting from the state, uh, the $24 million that's projected to be cut from OJJ's budget. Um, this particular program had been vetted already um, by the administration to determine if it was an essential part of our core operations. It was determined not to be. Our JDAI 
technical assistant person um, determined that it was not a part of their initiative uh, and certainly not considered a evidence-based program, which is what we are trying to move toward. <coughs> evidence-based meaning that the <coughs> outcomes of the program have been tested, proven, uh, analyzed over a, at least a three-year period for effectiveness in various different jurisdictions under different uh, circumstances and scenarios. And uh, this particular program is not an evidence-based program. Uh, I'm not saying it's not a good program. It's a character, character program. It's a rehabilitative program. But it's certainly one that is a program of the court that, um, you know, certainly we can decide to fund it. But I think it's at the expense of our core operations and services. And we have to make a decision. Um, if we're going to do that today, certainly it has no funding, so it's got to go beyond June if we're going to keep it. Uh, we talked about that in committee. I don't like the game that's been played with this particular uh, funding because last year we did six months, and we were told, you know, if you all just get us to June, the state is going to do something, and we did that. Then they came back and said, well, that didn't work out. If you can just get us to the end of the year, December 31st, then we'll, we'll be fine. We did that. I thought with the caveat that that was it. The court rightfully picked up the cost of the program in January because it is their program that they want, not essential to our core operation, not a part of the JDAI initiative, which we've invested a lot of time and resources, staff resources, into being a part of, but yet we're not <coughs> adhering to all of the recommendations and the suggestions that, that have been given us. Um, and so they've been funding the, the program, rightfully so, over the last couple of months, and now they're asking us to <coughs> fund it to June because they were told by a commissioner or two that that's all they could get right now knowing full well that come June, they don't have any money to continue the program. And I just see it similar to what we had to do with the um, Star Boot Camp. I mean, at some point, we got to cut bait. And so I'm, I'm not going to support this today. I think I've been pretty consistent with my feelings about, you know, um, making sure that we have not only an effective operation, but that we have an efficient operation as well. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Epperson? A couple of my questions were answered uh, by Ms. Lynch. I thought that we had uh, received a request last year to piecemeal this, I think, for a couple of periods of time. So that was one question I was going to ask. Secondly, uh, the deficit that we've been carrying, uh, if I'm correct, they say we are still getting the millage of the Juvenile Detention Center from 1956. That's correct, sir. And that's the reason for that deficit. Yes, sir. And I think last year upon our committee meetings, I believe there may have been a request that we were discussing uh, about the same issue. Uh, that was brought to me. I think it's time that we address that 1956 millage. Uh, Let's see, I've been here, well, 17 and a half years. You all know how long that deficit we've been carrying it. In each of uh, my town hall meetings, I always bring that out about that deficit that we've been carrying. I do a survey of the constituents that come out. When we inform them uh, factually and as, as articulate as we can, and each of the last surveys that I've done, the people that have attended uh, are pleased with what this how this body has been operating the last four years. And uh, on that survey, it was uh, stated that if there was a referendum to change that millage to alleviate that deficit of the juvenile detention center, that those persons that were there and I. I take them literally because they are core, faithful constituents. 
those are movers and shakers uh, within that district. And they stated about 78% that they would vote in favor of it. I think we need to uh, address that deficit, <coughs> we evaluate if we can get that alleviated some of our core responsibilities of the juvenile detention center and maybe utilize some other consistent form of revenue that we may have if we can get that uh, alleviated revenue continue to come back and piecemeal and piecemeal this particular operation uh, we see what's happening down in in baton rouge and as usual we always left out in north louisiana and it appears as though the agenda is already set before we even get to the table. We aren't even asked to come to the table when a lot of these things are put into place. So that lets us know we shouldn't really be expecting anything from, from Baton Rouge uh, at this point in time. And my vote today, I would not support this because I think we need to look at addressing that deficit. We've been putting it off long enough. Thank you. Mr. Dominic, Owen, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, I understand the deficit. I know about deficits real well. Um, I find it amazing one who's gone to all these trips on juvenile problems uh, doesn't understand the problem. Uh, the problem is insurmountable. We all know that. And if you're out there in the real world, you really know it. Um, I find it incomprehensible that one can take all these trips that y'all been taking and not take care of the babies. I don't think it's right. I realize there's a deficit. Believe me, it's a bad world out there for these children where they're growing up. I'm going to support it. I'll support that before I support anything else. I'm not going to see us not take care of the children. Their parents may not be doing it. That's not their fault. Uh, there's not a day goes by that I don't counsel a young person to either stay in school, get an education, get a job. There's nobody helping them. Nobody at home happened to Mungadi. The problem's not going to get any better. It'll get worse if we don't start working on it. I'll support the commission. Thank you. Mr. Escudet, um, I'm going to support it as well. And, and um, here's my reason. We, we first, when it was first presented to us and, and we sponsored it and said, let's get a run at it. We <coughs> said, fine. And, and I think that... Uh, what we'd be doing is cutting bait too soon. It takes a while, a year or two, a couple of years, programs like this for you to be able to go back and assess hard results. And uh, I think we'll be doing this prematurely. This is not, this is kind of a deterrent, a prevention program. It's certainly a better um, alternative than incarceration and confinement or suspension. And if you look at the numbers of children it serves versus the cost, you know, it's a relative bargain. Um, and, I, and I agree with Mr. Smith. You know, uh, we're probably, for a lot of these kids, we're their last hope. But this involves the parents, this particular program, too. Um, I, I think we ought to go ahead, as they've asked, and fund this through Jen. They have told us they will be able to have tangible data for us as far as the results and the impact of the program. The judges seem to think it's working. Not that we believe everything we're told by everybody, but they seem very passionate about this. So obviously they, they feel they're getting some results for it. So I think we need to continue it on, at least for the remaining half of this year. We can take the data presented to us and evaluate it and see whether or not we're getting a return on our investment. If they do not at that time, as they promised, have that data, have something for us to look at, then, then fine, we can move on. <clears throat> as far as the deficit, I haven't been around as long as Mr. Epperson, but I've been around long <laughs> since 95, and it is <laughs> deficit 95. The tax goes back to that 59 or 60. 57. 57. 57. 57. 
with the last tax, which was before I was born, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> Not much. But the deficit, I don't know how long the deficit has been there, but it's been here since 95, since I first arrived. And even when things were tight back then, we didn't have any excess resources. We always found a way to manage and provide. And we've been able to do that uh, in light of, of the growth and expansion of the need and the building of the new facility. We've had two taxes, at least two calls for tax election since I've been around that I know of, and, and, and it got defeated. Now, I'm not sure if uh, a poll was done ever after to find out why it got defeated. Um, maybe because uh, Mr. Way. Epperson may have a good point. Back then, we wasn't as pleasant people to be around as, <laughs> as we are today. I, you know, I don't know, but I do know that I agree with Mr. Epperson that I'd like to find a long-term funding solution to it for the future, because right now we can cover it, and, and you, know, you can only dance around it so many years and, and hope that we'll find a way, and we've found a way for years and years. So I'd like to take care of it. But at the, at the other hand, we're not going to take care of it overnight. We're, it's going to take a vote of confidence of the people to want to support this. They're going to have to decide they want to do it, and they're going to have to feel good about the future of our parish and our state and our country and their financial situation before they'll ever support a tax increase. And I don't blame them because they feel the same way. So given that, in the interim, do we just abandon any innovative efforts to try to take care of the problem and serve these children until we get that problem fixed? Well, I, I think not. I, I'm going to. I want to give them. I want to give them the rest of the funding. I want to see. I want to see some hard results in June, and, and make a determination then whether or not we need to continue this or not, and uh, and go from there. But I don't want to give up on it just quite yet. Thank you, Ms. Glenn. Um, we are a governmental body as a whole, and when I, for instance, go to a grocery store and I want to make a purchase, and I look in my left pocket, and there's no money in my left pocket. All I have to do is look in my right pocket, and maybe there's some money in there. Um, the question that I ask is for Mrs. Bryant, in that right now we're, we're pulling surplus money from streets, roads, and drainage, which I would never want to see us pull money down in a particular, from a particular budget to an unsafe level. And my question to Mrs. Bryant is, what number would be an unsafe level that we could pull that down to that we would never want to approach and what amount of money is in there right now? A point of information, which is a question. We are not, are we, we are not pulling out any funds that we are not lawfully committed to pull, right. that, that the voters have not That's said right. we could transfer. Absolutely. So, okay, well, the way it's worded, the way it's been worded, it sounds like we're doing something inappropriate, and I want to say for the not. we are not. No, right. 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 I'm sorry, if okay. I phrased something that I thought word. that came out inappropriate, no, no, everything that we're doing, we are authorized by the voters to do, which is pull from one fund that has a surplus and supplement the other fund that, that has a deficit. And so basically, you're pulling money from one pocket to the other, but it's all going to the same governmental body. Right. Commissioner, <clears throat> what we're doing um, to fund the, the deficit for juveniles, we have uh, two millages that we're using. You have your criminal justice millage, where there are several funds that are, are um, reducing a portion of their property taxes and putting it towards criminal justice. And then you have your public works millage that can be used for criminal justice. There were two red uh, rededications that allowed this. We are not transferring money from one fund. We're, we're transferring money from the criminal justice fund, but on the public works millage, we're using taking that millage and dividing it between criminal justice and public works. Public works, I cannot say that they are in a um, situation where they are being negatively impacted. When we did the rededication, you all said at that time that you would not reduce the money right. in the public works fund beyond below a level that was current at that time. And because of the property taxes that have been generated in the public works fund, they they are in, in, in a very healthy situation, the public works fund is. And so you have the monies. Um, we estimate, I'd say, uh, 10 years that we thought that we can use that uh, public works millage towards criminal justice. So I guess at any point that you're using another millage to try to fund something else, at some point, yes, it will come um, to a head. Is it an immediate point? I cannot say. You, you delicately and, and uh, politically uh, 
skirted the question um, with, with indirect answers, and I will, I will gladly let you slide. However, the point being made is that the money that we're supplementing the juvenile detention facility with is there. And as I heard her say, will be there anticipated for no less than 10 years. And so for us to bicker over $35,000 going to the juvenile detention facility for um, the reform of youth is, is something that we don't necessarily need to bicker over right now. However, I would like, like everybody else has said, to see the facts as far as, as what program treats what youth and, and where are we getting the most bang for the buck, which I know the administration and juvenile is working on. Thank you, Mr. President. Hey, we're going to second round on this debate. I would ask that everyone remember you have five minutes. And I ask you to be la to laser, laser in on the focus of what we're voting on today. Ms. Lynch? So I can't go off on a tangent. I don't think you <laughs> Just joking. Um, I don't want to give anybody the impression that we're dickering over $35,000 uh, when you have a $6 million operation that's uh, bringing in right now revenues of $4 million, uh, with $2 million having to come out of another fund. Uh, we're in essence talking about millions of dollars, ultimately. And um, as I said again, I, you know, I mean, I know I'm almost talking to the wind because the deal had already been cut before we even got to this point today. But I do want to go on record just to say that, um, you know, we've got some cuts coming down uh, from the state. There's a 100% chance that some of them we're going to have to absorb because they affect our core services <coughs> and operations. Uh, I don't want anybody to think that there are not plenty of programs and services that are already out in the community that are being utilized for our kids. A number of them we fund through our NGO process. That's not an eight week program and they cut them loose, but that they are working with these kids 365 days a year. The majority of those programs, we're, contrib we're contributing a portion of their cost, whether that's a mentoring program or what have you, but we're not fully funding any of those programs. And um, I think if you look at the number of kids that don't come through de our detention center, then you know that those programs are working. We're dealing with a very small population. Uh, certainly a population that has to be handled in a different way. But I don't want anybody to have the impression that this particular program, which I believe has only been in existence maybe two years, two years, has been some type of savior for all the little black boys that are running through uh, our juvenile detention center right now. Certainly there are other programs out there, other people, other organizations, other entities uh, most of them community and faith based that are working with our kids. Um, some of those programs which have been uh, uh, persons have refused to work with and will not even give them an opportunity to be used and that's the information uh, that we're getting now from probation to determine if the court is actually being fair in using a broad based approach to dealing with our kids and juvenile. The preliminary, preliminary information is that that is not happening. Um, and so, you know, that there's a favorite program or a favorite organization, <coughs> certainly I don't think the uh, message that we want to send to the community is certainly not one that I want to send to the inner city communities, uh, but that we want to work with your kids for eight weeks and cut them loose. We want to work with them year round. Uh, and to make sure that they receive the support to become productive citizens. Yes, there are some kids that are going to need some intensive intervention, and we have things in place for that. And so uh, I just want I just wanted to be clear 
that this is a new program and hasn't been validated we do have programs that have been validated that are either not being used or that are being underutilized some of them uh, cost money some of them we're giving money to some of them uh, would not cost us anything if our uh, uh, court and if our juvenile uh, services department would utilize them and so we're actually paying double to get the same thing okay so I want to be clear about that thank you Mr. Ashkenite well I find it interesting you know there's, there's two authorities involved in this this the juvenile court to do what it does is chartered by state law and then our responsibility to fund those operations and if there are outside interest or organizations or parties who seem to have a gripe or a better idea or something then they need to bring not only their ideas but their resources to the table because short of that they really don't have anything else in the game. It's easy to criticize something going on when, when you have something you're advocating and promoting for yourself and you want to see it put in its place. As far as programs that are validated or not, you know, a uh, cursive writing program was validated when I was in middle school and they don't even teach that anymore. They're not even teaching cursive anymore. Things change, times change, and we have to adapt. Um, I'm glad Ms. Bryant shed light on uh, the financial condition of funding this. You know, it appeared before when we first entered this that we're in some sort of financial crisis situation with impending doom. And that is not the case. So this deficit has been going on forever, at least since I've been around since 95. We've always found a way. We, we, if you want to be critical of the fact that we're taking or using subsidizing resources from other funds, which the voters said we could do, I don't know how you can be critical of that. They, they denied a tax increase twice, but said, you know what, we'll allow you to use your excess revenues and these other funds to plug that. That's what plug that gap. That's what the voters said we could do. Now we've been doing that. We're doing it successfully. So, you know, I don't understand what the big problem is, but I do know this. We shouldn't give up on this program. I, I want to give it a little while to see if it works. And if there's outside interest to have some ideas, fine. Bring your money and your mouth to the table. And what I would hope to do without picking anybody is the members of the Juvenile Justice Committee would realize, you know, that we're not going to get anything accomplished unless you get with the stakeholders involved over at the Juvenile Court operation and decide that you're on the same page and your ships are sailing in the same direction and quit this hostility and this turf war stuff, which seems to be going on. Because I'm not active in the Juvenile Committee, I admit that. And I want to do what's recommended by this committee so that's best for the children of this parish. But I want to do it with a confidence that everybody has the best interest of the children at heart and that both these bodies are working together. And I just don't feel like like they are. And I would suggest that any employee of the juvenile court or uh, operations or any member of this body who's on the uh, juvenile detention committee, if you're not committed to it and your heart's in it, get out. This is a serious problem. <coughs> and it's not going away and, and you have to have a special commitment to want to do this and it's part of the reason why I'm not on that committee it's just my interest and my passion lies somewhere else so you know let, let's let's fund this program we'll have two and a half years into it at the end of uh, uh, middle of the summer we'll look at the hard data and then decide and then for God's sake let's get together and figure out what we're going to allocate for special programs funding in the future do that in a budget year and leave it up to the, the maybe a joint decision with the committee and the experts who run run the court to decide what's what they're going to spend their money on and what not and then hold everybody accountable for the results. Thank you. I just have one comment and then we can vote if there's no other speakers. Uh, the only comment I have is if I won't give a message to the community regardless of the community I would say parents do your job so that we don't have to see your children. <laughs> that would be my preference. <laughs> Cast your vote, please. Passes eight two. All right. Ordinance number fifty one eighty five of twenty twelve to amend and reenact Article six to change the definitions and references and cattle economic inclusion initiative ordinances. Track the language in the Louisiana Economic Development Small and Emerging Business Statutes. So moved, Chair. Moved by Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Lynn. Yes. 
Second. 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 Second.
passes 10-0. Resolution number 15 of 2012, a resolution expressing the intent of Parish of Caddo to make parish government accessible to persons with visual or hearing impairments. So moved. Moved by Mr. Williams, second by... Second. Yep. Second. Mr. Johnson. Pastor Ruff, please. Passes 10-0. Next we move to new business. You know, I'm going to need a little help on this. We had an agenda addition to authorize an emergency appropriation. I understand from our attorney that we need to wait and introduce that at the next meeting. Okay. Next we move to confirmation for commissioners to attend the forthcoming NOPCO Economic Development Conference to be held in Atlanta, Georgia, April 18th through 22nd. Second. Second. Move by Ms. Lynch. Who's second? Mr. Epson. I do want to speak. Yes. Um, I want to just clarify some things just for the record. Uh, Caddo Parish has, has a storied history, I guess, uh, I'd say, with these uh, two organizations. We know with the, of course, with the police jury, we've been very active. Uh, we've had two persons from this commission to serve as president of the Police Jury Association, Donald H. and Carl Pearson, future David Cox and Ken Epperson, uh, hopefully, uh, as well as with the uh, National Association of Black County Officials, which is the, the actually the membership organization, Donald H., the president of that organization. Um, both of the, both NACO and the police jury have black caucuses uh, that are affiliates of the major organization. Um, at the state level, the Black Caucus, Rose, Sam, and Donald H. have served as presidents. Um, with uh, NOPCO, which is the National Organization of Black County Officials, both myself and Carl uh, Pearson serve on the board of that organization. Uh, and also, um, Donald H. and Percy Wilson were co-founders of that organization when it was first formed. Every year since I've been here, and even before, some of you have been here longer, uh, members from this commission <coughs> have attended the Nautico Economic Development Conference. 50% uh, of this parish is African American. 60% of our major municipality, which is the city of Shreveport, is African American. And I don't think we need to fool ourselves that inner city communities present unique challenges um, that require unique and innovative solutions. There's been some concern uh, expressed about the amount of travel dollar-wise that the commission has spent. But in um, 2010, we spent 30,000 less than we did in 2009. And in 2011, uh, it was $20,000 less than we did in 2009. So that, that's an amount that, it's, that we've not seen going up uh, over the last uh, several years, and so um, I would urge um, you all support for this. I don't know. I know Monday Commissioner Cox asked who was going. Um, I'm not sure if he asked each and each individual commissioner. Uh, but when I put something on the agenda uh, regarding a conference that I think would be beneficial, it's because I think it would be beneficial for all 12 of us. And it's up to each individual commissioner to decide, um, you know, whether they want to avail themselves of that opportunity. But I certainly think that the quality of our of my representation, uh, and as well as our representation as a body, as I said earlier, is I think in part because we have uh, taken the time and the opportunity to avail ourselves of going and bringing things back this parish and I would appreciate you all support. Williams. Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will be supporting Ms. Lynch's uh, trip to NAPCO because two of our founding fathers of NAPCO, I had the pleasure of serving with the late Commissioner H and the late Percy Wilson, two of my mentors. Um, we recognize that we have a unique district. Uh, some of our needs are different from other needs. Some needs are <coughs> roads, streets, and drainage. Well, I know where I serve, we need some of everything. We need jobs, we need housing, we need education, we need health care. 
streets, roads. And I feel the only way you're going to be an effective leader, you can't leave from sitting in chairs. You got, if you want to know, you got to go. And meet up with the rest of the world, connect and link up with other, network with other commissioners and other uh, members to learn about the economic opportunity for citizens, especially in our districts, and bring back some wholesome, worthwhile knowledge uh, here in the district to help our uh, community that are hurting. Uh, we know that all these unfunded mandates fall on the, on the traps of the commission, and hopefully um, we shouldn't be cherry-picking what one commissioner needs for his district. Uh, here we're very unique and very diverse. Uh, the people in my community ranges from all the way from North Island to Shreve Island. We have young, old, black, white, rich, poor, and moderate income. So if, 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 if my colleague can go somewhere and learn uh, uh, the diversification of economic and business opportunities, uh, I, I think it's a worthwhile initiative for her to go. Uh, and I, we need to be conscious of our uh, travel budget. We need to stay within the, uh, a safe, keep a safe haven in that budget. And uh, I think we've done well, uh, been transparent with the taxpayers. And whenever we decide to do something, they always support it. So I, I don't think uh, uh, we should uh, allow uh, a, a commissioner, if they want to go on a trip, uh, if it's in the best interest of all the districts, especially in, in their particular district, we shouldn't be uh, trying to stop uh, the commissioner from choosing what is best for the district. And, and definitely in an urban district, as I said, uh, economic opportunity is one thing all of our districts need. And, uh, we can learn uh, what's going on around America and, and bring back uh, to the, the new south with a new swagger here in Cattle Parish. Uh, I do feel uh, that this trip is very worthwhile. Only reason why I'm not going, I have other uh, uh, things going on at that time, and I would love to go. I haven't been on a trip yet. Uh, I do plan on going to uh, Pittsburgh, Mr. Commissioner. As today, I've never been. And hopefully, I can learn uh, uh, some great things they're doing in Pittsburgh for their downtown development and for some urban development. So that was a, uh, a, a our city and a state on the verge of bankruptcy. However, they have turned that state and city around uh, with all the iron industry is coming back, it's coming back to life. So. Uh, I hope that uh, commission, we will support her uh, in this in this role. She represents all of us. She represents us very well. In the past, she represented Cattle Parish very well. I'm proud to serve with Commissioner Lynch. She's a very advocate for her people, for the mm -hmm. district. And I think she loves Cattle Parish, and I think uh, we should, uh, you know, support her at this time. Thank you. All right, cash your vote, please. Uh, passes. Now it fails five five. It's time. But does not pass. The problem? Any no other business, sir? All right. We've got, we got a meeting there. Yeah. Remind you that we. Well, we're we, we had a special meeting uh, right after this.